This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle by StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your own freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off. Hey, what's going on, guys? So choosing a text editor is a big deal to some people, especially if you're just getting started. And I think it's a good idea to test different editors out and see what works best for you. There's various reasons people use different editors. You have different built-in features, plugins, look and style, keyboard shortcuts, workflow, and a ton of other factors that go into it. So in this video, I simply want to give you my top five picks for free text editors. And to be clear, these are not IDEs or integrated development environments. IDEs are much more intricate with extensive debugging, testing, compiling, and so on. These are strictly text editors, which are what most web developers use. And I also want to make it clear that this is my opinion. If my number five is your number one, or your number one is, is my number five, or whatever, I don't even know if that makes sense. Uh, it just means that something else works better for you than it works for me. And that goes for anybody all right so there's no set in stone list um, this is just my opinion so let's go ahead and get started all right so number five is Komodo edit not to be confused with the Komodo IDE because they do have an integrated development environment uh, which I don't believe is free uh, and it's much more robust as it's an IDE I do have limited experience experience with this particular editor relative to the rest on this list but what I got from from it when I used it was it was extremely simple and it had a very minimal design okay as you can see from the thumbnail it, it looks very minimal uh, which is to me a good thing a lot of times less is more um, when you open up something like Eclipse or let's say Visual Studio not Visual Studio code but just Visual Studio the IDE it's so overwhelming because there's just so many little buttons and menu options and sidebars and Komodo seemed to it just seemed really straightforward and I think that's what I liked most about it um, it has something called focus mode which will hide all of the open windows and just display the editor this limits distraction and lets you focus on exactly what you need to there's also a, a, this big go to anything text box where you can do just that you can search for files install plugins open menu items and just about anything else from that one um, that one text box and it, it kind of reminds me of VS Code's command palette. It also has cursor history, meaning in addition to redoing and undoing specific actions, you can redo and undo where your cursor goes. It also has built-in FTP connection capability so that you can connect remotely to servers and update files on your host. Uh, it also has uh, built-in browser preview, which is always helpful. So rather than going outside of the editor and opening your HTML files or whatever you're working on, um, you can preview it through the editor. So I think overall simplicity is the, the biggest advantage of Komodo Edit. Although, like I said, I do have limited experience with it. All right, so next we have Brackets. Brackets is really geared towards web designers and front-end developers, meaning, you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. In my experience, you don't see too many developers uh, writing PHP or Python or, or anything like that using brackets. I used it for about six months uh, a long time ago. There may be some new features since then, but again, like Komodo Edit, the interface is very, very simple. Uh, I do like the syntax highlighting, the color coded HTML tags and attributes. Um, when I used brackets back in the day, I loved the live preview feature. It works sort of like VS Code's live server extension, except it's built into the to the editor. Uh, it opens your HTML files on your local host, I think on port 3000 and any changes that you make when you save uh, when you save in your editor, it, it refreshes the browser and shows your changes, which is really nice. Brackets was the first editor where I actually saw something like this built in, and I really loved it. Uh, there's also different themes. There's a, a light theme here. I prefer the dark theme. I think a lot of developers do, um, but you know they have some others as well. The keyboard shortcuts are also really helpful. They're easy to use, and they can make you work much quicker. No matter what editor you use, I would highly suggest learning some helpful keyboard shortcuts. All right, so that's brackets at number four. 
All right, so number three, I, I debated putting it on here because Sublime Text technically isn't free. There is a commercial license, uh, but the free version does give you all the capabilities of the commercial. Uh, it's just that every now and again, you'll get a pop up that asks you if you want to buy a license. You also get this little unregistered uh, in the title bar here. But Sublime Text is awesome. I have used it for years. Um, I don't use it anymore, but I did use it for years. And I think what what makes it stick out is its performance. It's incredibly fast. It's built from custom components, and I find it faster than any editor that I've used. In fact, I use it now just for like opening, you know, quick text files or uh, dot files, things like that. When I need to open a single file really quickly, I use Sublime Text. So it's it's basically my notepad. And not only that, I usually use it for my preview code. So when I do a, a tutorial or a course, I have my sample code outside of the screen where you guys can't see it in sublime text. And then I use uh, my number one on screen, which, you know, if you guys watch my videos, you know what that's going to be. Um, so some other features, the command palette, it holds infrequently um, used functionality like sorting, changing the syntax, changing the indentation settings, things like that. With just a few keystrokes, you can search for what you want without having to navigate through the menus or remembering key bindings. Um, there's also a very powerful API and package ecosystem. It uses a Python API that allows plugins to augment built-in functionality. Uh, package control can be installed through the command palette. You can install thousands of packages built by the community. Now, the biggest downside to Sublime, in my opinion, is I really don't think it's very intuitive and user friendly. And you may disagree with me if you've been using it for a while and you know the ins and outs. But I think a lot of the features, all, it's a very, very powerful tool. But I think a lot of the features are sort of hidden. And I think they could do a much better job of making certain things easier to use, including the whole command palette and the, the package control workflow. Uh, I think that that's it's the, the biggest negative, at least for me. Uh, but overall, it's a very professional and very powerful editor. All right, so number two is uh, Adam. And it's funny, the order of this list, aside from Komodo Edit, is the order um, that I actually use these text editors in. So before the number one, I used Adam before that sublime text before that brackets. Um, so Adam, in my opinion, is one of the easiest and the most intuitive text editors when it comes to interface. Everything is very, very self explanatory. Everything seems to be in the right place. Customization and settings are easy to change. Um, there's also a phenomenal package manager to extend Adam. I also think Adam is the, one of the nicest looking, if not the nicest looking editor. Uh, some of the themes that are available are absolutely beautiful. So you have real time collaboration. This is something that's been added since I've used it. Uh, it seems really cool for pair coding, working with teams and so on. It also has built in GitHub integration to increase your workflow when it comes to Git and version control. Um, now I'm saying this from the perspective of about a year ago, but I think the biggest downside to Atom is its performance. Um, when I used it on basically a super machine with, you know, an i7, 32 gigs of RAM, it was fine. Um, but when I tried using it on a less powerful laptop or something like that, it really lagged. And that was a, a huge negative um, that, that, at least in my opinion, I think that, you know, when you use a text editor, it needs to just be flawless. It needs to fly. And Adam really lagged behind. I don't know if they fixed it since then. They may have. Um, there may have been some improvements over the past whatever year and a half, two years since I've used it. You guys can let me know in the comments, but uh, I think that was my biggest beef with Adam. Everything else I think was was great. All right, so finally we're at number one, okay? So number one, no surprise, is Notepad, okay? So Notepad is, you can type stuff, uh, it runs on Windows only, you can save files, you can open files, so it's a really uh, just like, just cutting edge text editor. <laughs> I'm just I'm just messing with you guys. So number one is obviously Visual Studio Code. You guys have seen me use it for the past two years or so. 
I can't really say enough about this editor. It's it's incredibly fast and intuitive. I wouldn't say it's as fast as Sublime in my experience, but it makes up for it in just about every other area. Its built-in tabbed terminal is amazing, and it's one of the features that really pulled me in um, when I was using Atom. You can install terminal plugins in a lot of other editors, but a lot of the times they're really wonky. They don't work right. The 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 terminal in VS Code is just awesome. I know WebStorm is another a great editor that has a terminal but I don't believe it's free which is why it's not on this list I've also I don't really have any experience with it um, but I've heard great things about it I think VS Code has the best extensions by far I don't care what language or framework you're working in you'll almost always find an extension that does all that you need in terms of highlighting IntelliSense and snippets much much more um, the keyboard shortcuts are amazing and easily customized it makes for very a very fast workflow Emmet is a fantastic tool which allows you to use shortcuts to write HTML and CSS really quickly. And while Emmet is available for almost all text editors as some sort of plugin or extension, it actually comes built in with VS Code. Okay, uh, it's great for almost any language and definitely anything related to web development. You know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Python. ASP.NET and the list goes on um, and there's there's extensions for all the all of these languages as well so it has a powerful debugger with uh, some extra tools that almost make it a borderline IDE without the perf uh, the uh, performance constraints of an IDE you also have easy peer sharing so you can connect and work with other people in your editor remotely um, and there's a lot more that I could put on this list but it just wouldn't fit Uh, so that's definitely my number one, and I don't see myself using a, a different text editor for quite a while unless they come up with something really, really cool. But that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this list. Again, it's just my personal top five. It's, it's not, you know, set in stone or anything like that. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave it a like, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, one of the best, if not the best resource I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing. The creator Kyle shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it. You get a 130 page guide to freelancing and it comes with things like invoice templates, client proposals, HTML and CSS templates, a portfolio website, access to a private Facebook community and much more. So use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off today.